Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I host a prepping channel here on YouTube and I am being driven absolutely crazy by you. And I'm not the only one. Prepping hosts here all over YouTube are being driven up the wall by five things that you are doing. You wanna know what those top five things are? Stick around. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. All right, so like I said in the opening, what we're gonna talk about here are the top five things that you as a viewer are doing that just drive prepping hosts here on YouTube absolutely crazy. This is one of those videos where we're gonna be talking a bunch. I think it's kind of a, maybe not an important topic, but an interesting topic, but it's not very visually interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be walking around here on the homestead. In particular, uh, the other day my boy has a fish tank and we had a dragonfly larva in the fish tank. We thought it'd be kind of interesting. He grabbed some local fish from the, the pond. He grabbed a goldfish, put it in the fish tank. Fish tank's going really well, but we found out later that dragonfly larva will actually try to eat small fish. So I'm taking that dragonfly larva in this video. We're returning it to the stream from whence it came. And on the way down there, I run into an animal that is a heck of a lot bigger than a dragonfly larva. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, stick around and you'll get to see that during the video. Okay, so let's jump in and talk about these five things that just drive people like myself bonkers. The first one I wanna talk about, number one, is the accusation that we here on YouTube are using a lot of clickbait titles to bring people into prepping videos. Uh, the idea with a clickbait title is that it promises one thing and doesn't deliver. And usually what it promises in the uh, venue of uh, prepping videos is it promises a bunch of escapist, doom, gloom, negativity, uh, sensationalism, uh, impending doom that's just right, right around the corner. That's what the clickbait titles tend to uh, promise. And the concern, <laughs> if you want to call it that, from people oftentimes is that uh, prepping channels aren't, deliver uh, aren't delivering. Instead of delivering doom and gloom and sensationalism and impending disaster, they deliver something like a lesson or a skill or some kind of practical thing that you can do. Uh, the implication being they were expecting to get lead and instead, instead they got gold. They were expecting junk food and they got a healthy meal as an alternative. And people are upset about this. Well, yes, clickbait titles are used. I try to use titles that we're, are going to try to draw people in that are uh, needing to hear the message that I'm trying to spread here. I always love it when people come back to the channel. Uh, one of my favorite things about hosting this channel is, you know, you guys, you know who you are, people who come back and we have an ongoing dialogue, we learn from each other. That's a great sense of community that gets built here. But really one of the important things that I'm trying to do here is outreach and reach new people that aren't into prepping because there are not enough people who are into prepping, into preparedness, ready for disasters to make that much of a difference on the grand scale of things. You need a lot of people that are able to kind of carry themselves through an emergency so that uh, public uh, services and things of that nature don't get overwhelmed and we're nowhere near that. So outreach is really important. So we're trying to reach people that aren't necessarily interested in things other than escapist entertainment. And the way to do that is clickbait titles. So. You know, I would compare this a lot to political advertising. People are always bemoaning and complaining uh, the state of political um, discourse here in the United States that it's always so negative. You know, uh, political ads are always so negative. They do attack ads, negative ads. People are always saying, we'd love to see things more positive. But the reality is people don't respond to the positive messages anywhere near as uh, intensely as they respond to the negative messages. So the fact that we are creating these types of uh, titles and uh, thumbnails to try to get people to uh, come in the door so they can learn lessons are designed because that's the only thing that you guys seem to be interested in is entertainment, doom, gloom, sensationalism, and impending disaster. So that's the way that we uh, try to reach out to you guys. Uh, you know, if you were interested in things that were good for you, we'd come at it from a different point of view. But the fact is, that's what people are interested in is popcorn and bubblegum. So we make the titles look like popcorn and bubblegum. And then we try to serve you a healthy four course dinner once you get there and people still complain about it. Number two, the second thing I wanted to talk about is uh, it's an accusation that actually springboards off of the idea that we are always uh, doing clickbait ads, and that is we want to bring a lot of people through the door because we want, we're want we just raking it in. We're, we're getting rich here on YouTube doing these prepping videos that we're just shills trying to make a dollar. 
Um, that is bafflingly stupid <laughs> if anyone thinks that we are doing that. If you wanted to make money on YouTube, and plenty of people do, if I wanted to make a lot of money on YouTube, what I would do is I would, uh, you know, play video games, record it, uh, say a bunch of dumb shit while I'm playing the video games, and uh, just uh, release the, uh, the live recording of that, and that is really popular. It's also really easy, it'd be fun for me to play video games and do that, and people make an awful lot of money uh, doing that. I could uh, make puppy or kitten compilation videos, I could buy one of these machines that just crushes things or grinds things up, and I could throw various uh, things that I want to be wasteful with uh, down into these crushing grinding machines and just shoot videos of it. That seems to be super popular. Or I could just have an angry political commentary kind of channel where I just get you up in arms and uh, dysfunctionally angry about things. I could do that. Uh, that would be a better way of making money. If you think that anyone who has been into uh, the prepping and preparing uh, genre here on YouTube for any amount of time, I've been doing this for uh, you know at least five years. Other people have been doing it that long, long or longer. You know, we all got into it when it was this really niche thing that nobody was really into. You know, since COVID, some people are pretending that they're into prepping and preparedness now. But even now, it's not really super popular. There are so many better ways of making money than hosting a prepping and preparedness channel here on YouTube. I used to be a cinematographer and uh, I used to make in one day what it takes me about six months to make on YouTube. So we're, I'm not here for the money. The reason I'm here is because this is something that's important to me. This is something that I think has benefit to other people and I want to share it with other people. That's the reason I'm here. That's the reason any uh, you know legitimate prepping channel is here on YouTube. They're not here to make a million dollars. They're here because they think this is important and they want to help you. The third thing that I want to talk about, actually, and again, it connects with uh, you know what we just talked about about uh, you know money and finances, is that you'd really have to be an idiot in order to think that you're going to make a ton of money hosting a prepping channel here on YouTube. Uh, and being an idiot is something that we get accused of being all the time. Uh, I think people have a knee-jerk reaction when they hear someone saying something that they don't like. They want to discredit that person and think to themselves, oh, this person's just an idiot. There's no reason for me to listen to this person that's suggesting that I need to do things. I don't want to do things, so they must be crazy. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure how to address that other than just ask the question, how many times do I or anyone else that hosts a legitimate prepping channel on YouTube here, how many times do we have to be right in order for people to start thinking, you know, that person has a pretty good track record. I mean, just speaking only for myself, uh, you know, just going back a couple years, uh, COVID, when that was first identified, I called that to the T. I knew that that was going to be different. I knew it was going to disrupt society. I knew that the lockdowns were going to happen. I pr uh, forecast the beginning of the lockdowns. I pretty much for, uh, forecast the end of the lockdowns. They actually happened a couple of months prior uh, than, uh, to when I was thinking. I thought the lockdowns were going to last a little bit longer, but, uh, they, you know, they ended up... Uh, ending just the way that I suggested that they would when other people were, you know, doom and gloom saying they were just going to go on forever. Uh, you know, sticking with uh, COVID for a moment, the vaccines, uh, you know, it was a vaccine for a, cor uh, a coronavirus. People have tried and failed to make vaccines for coronaviruses before. It was my sense it was probably going to be the same situation where people were going to make something and it would be somewhat effective but not super effective and totally nailed that. I was, uh, I was called all sorts of names when I suggested the vaccines weren't going to be any kind of a silver bullet that would stop things. Uh, I was accused of misinformation. Videos were taken offline. And now that's public uh, common knowledge <laughs> that, you know, you don't just get the vaccine and think that you're bulletproof after that. Uh, I mean, other things, uh, uh, and the energy crunch that we're looking at right now, climate volatility that we're looking at right now, conflict in Europe that we're looking at right now, the ec economic turmoil that's going on right now, all of these things that were very accurately forecast here on my channel. I don't tend to make predictions, but when I do, they almost always, in fact, I might even just use the word always, have come to pass. I'm making predictions now about things in the future that aren't that sunny, and people are still saying, oh, you're way off base. You don't know what you're talking about. How many times do we have to get it right for people to start taking us seriously? The only thing that I think people could potentially uh, critique is that oftentimes we don't give timetables. I don't tend to give timetables. I mentioned that I, I did once give a timetable related to the lockdowns, uh, when they were going to be lifted. I thought that they were going to be lifted uh, somewhere around late spring or summer of 2022. They were lifted way earlier than that. Uh, it was, you know, barely early spring when the lockdowns were being pulled up. That surprised me a little bit, but I mean, we're talking about a difference of a couple of weeks. Timetables are tricky, uh, and a lot of people 
here on YouTube won't oftentimes give timetables. You know, sometimes the clickbait title suggests some kind of an impending uh, timetable, but, you know, we oftentimes don't talk in timetables because it's hard. There are so many different uh, working pieces. I, I would compare it to a car that has flown off the side of some kind of like a mountain road. It's hurtling down through the air, and you don't necessarily know how long it's going to be until it hit, uh, hits the bottom of the canyon and explodes. You know that it's going to, but you know maybe you don't know exactly what the acceleration due to gravity is here on Earth. You don't know exactly what the height of the, uh, the road was, so you don't know how far it has to fall. There's so many factors that play into these types of things. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly when something's going to happen. But there ain't no debating whether or not eventually the car is going to hit the bottom, and it's probably not going to be too long. So timetables are something that we oftentimes don't talk about, but people will tend to see see timetables in what we say and, and project their own sense of what their timetables are. And I think a lot of times people get this from Hollywood. There's a, uh, I mentioned that I'm a cinematographer. I come from that, that kind of background. And there's kind of a mantra in screenwriting in Hollywood that if there's a story that happened in real life over a year, try to compress it down to a month in a movie and it's going to make it much more interesting. If you have a story that lasts a month, try to compress that into a week in a screenplay and that'll make it more interesting. If you have a story that lasted a week, try to compress that into a day in a screenplay. It'll make the screenplay much more interesting. Hollywood tends to portray uh, everything, and especially disasters, as things that happen really quickly. You know, first things are fine and then 10 minutes later the whole world's turned upside down. That's not the way that it tends to work here in real life. And I think that people have seen so many Hollywood movies that they've gotten used to the idea that things happen super quickly and they project that false sense of immediacy and, uh, and velocity into the vague projections that are oftentimes talked about here on prepping channels and they incorrectly attribute what we're saying to be on a Hollywood timescale. It's not, it's different, and the fact that you're mistaken about how fast things happen doesn't mean that we were mistaken about how fast things happen. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is the victim complex, and this is something that I see all the time, uh, and it comes, uh, comes up when people just don't want to believe something, and there are so many different ways that people um, will react uh, to uh, creating kind of a victim complex for themselves. Here in the prepping and pre preparedness community, one of the common ways is getting into the whole conspiracy theory uh, field. Now, conspiracies happen all the time. It's part of human nature to conspire with other people to try to uh, you know, get, meet your own ends. Uh, but not everything is a conspiracy, and some people see things that way. And I think part of that is so that you have someone to blame for your troubles. It's these rich elites that are, uh, you know, managing the world that are making things so difficult for me. It's people on the left if I'm on the right. It's people on the right if I'm on the left. It's, uh, you know, people from another country that are, uh, you know, causing uh, issues with me. You know, creating blame uh, or even just saying, you know, a disaster would just be impossible to survive. So why should I even bother to... to uh, you know, to try. You know, that, that's just seeing yourself as being a victim. That there's, you're helpless in the world, and you know, there's a lot that society has done to create that impression in you. That, uh, you know, you are powerless uh, to affect your future. Uh, you know, a lot of our education works with that, where, you know, if someone is uh, disadvantaged, they are kind of almost coached to look at who to blame. And there are people to blame in, in the world. And, you know, whatever situation you find yourself in life, uh, you might not be the only person that has uh, caused that situation to come to pass, but you are the only person that you have total control over in order to try to change that situation. You are the person that can be leveraged uh, most effectively to make changes in your own life. You can worry about what other people are doing, but you are the one that you can most re readily, most easily alter. And a lot of people don't like to think about that. They just stick in this kind of victim complex. Anything that they can do really to just delay action, delay responsibility, delay having to, to do anything because people, people are lazy, I guess. And they create these kind of victim complexes to protect themselves from feeling like there's anything that they could do to make their life better. And that is just, it's really frustrating to people like myself who know that there are things that I can done, that I have done, that have made li my life better. Over the past several years where the world has, you know, quote unquote, been turned upside down, you know, people have just, people have been committing suicide at higher rates, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, domestic violence have all been going through the roof because people are, you know, just stressed out because they can't handle it. It has been nothing here. Here at our homestead, it has been, it has been one big bag of nothing because we were prepared for all this stuff and it didn't create any anxiety here at all. So we know, I know, that taking actions in advance can make your future much better, but so many people 
don't want to work to do the, to put in the work today, that they try to pretend that there's nothing tomorrow that is, is worth putting in any effort for. And the last thing is kind of a, a different version of, of kind of like a avoidance of work, uh, but I'm making it its own category, number five, and that is uh, the idea of endless nitpicking. And I see this all the time on videos where people nitpick, 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 missing the point of of a broader message that's, that's in a video. And they, they, they're just quarreling about minutia. And I think this is a defense mechanism with people in order to, again, just kind of delay and not have to take, uh, take action because they're busy quarreling about this, that, or the other thing. And I'll just give you a quick example. I recently did a video that was about uh, how to stock a pantry, uh, you know, uh, how to store food, what foods are good for storage, how long they can last, recipes that you can make with the food, uh, you know, all different types of things that are related to making it so that you can take actions to Today that will immeasurably improve the quality of your life tomorrow. And I remember uh, this is just an example of one person that uh, uh, took, uh, took issue with uh, what I felt was a reasonable price for a bag of uh, organic uh, wheat flour. Uh, they uh, were just all up in arms about how they felt that I, I was suggesting that wheat flour uh, is worth way more than they felt that it was worth and that I was just uh, it was just crazy talk for me that I would suggest that people uh, might consider paying a couple dollars a pound for wheat flour, uh, for organic wheat flour to be delivered to their house. That's what I usually do here. It's like about well, $2 a pound, I get organic wheat flour delivered to the house. I'm expecting some more in a couple of days. And, and they, they were, um, you know, quarreling, nitpicking about whether that's a good price or a bad price. And then at the end of the comment, they said something like, and with that, I'm out of here. Like, <laughs> big loss to me. Who really cares? But I do care. I do care, not for that person in particular, but the reason that I care about that kind of thing, because it's just some dumbass, you know, being a dumbass, and that's the way most people are in the world, isn't it? Why do I care about that? Why do I care about these five things? Why do they bother me? Why do they, uh, you know, drive me up the wall? Well, the reason is because as a prepper, I live in the present. It's a beautiful afternoon here. The sun's setting. It's calm. It's pleasant. There's no black flies. It's a really lovely, pleasant day here at the homestead. I'm, in, I'm appreciating the present. I'm living in the present. I live in the past. I think about things in the past. I think about history, and that educates, uh, you know, my sense of where things are now, why things are now, uh, why things are the way that they are now. And I take my knowledge of the past, project it into the future, and I live in the future as well. I live in the past, I live in the present, I live in the future. And doing it that way, as a prepper, that's what we do, is we think about the future, we draw from the past for information, we think about the future, and we take actions in the present. But we're always living in the past, the present, and the future. And when somebody acts in the way that I described, any one of these different ways, whether you know, they're, they're uh, trying to delay taking action, they are you know, nitpicking, they are you know, missing the point of things. Here on my channel, the way that I look at it is that I'm offering you guys a nice, healthy meal. Not junk food, something you can actually use to grow your life, uh, make uh, healthier patterns in your life, make a healthier future for yourself. And when I see people uh, disregarding that and just throwing it off to the side uh, and uh, kind of uh, treating it as though um, they can't be bothered uh, to, uh, to take actions now, it, in the present, doesn't really bother me, I suppose, because it doesn't really matter. It's just some dumbass being a dumbass. But when someone does something like that, I kind of look at the future of where that is headed. In the same way that if you look out your window right now and you have a couple of neighbors, and maybe you see one of your neighbors, uh, like a, a guy from that house, walks uh, out to the next house and uh, goes into the yard, and there's a couple in the yard, and this guy just starts wailing away, punching away at some guy's wife. That would really bother you. It would really bother me. You're seeing something awful transpire in front of your eyes. When I see people acting in a way now that is setting them up in the future to create tragic events like that, I feel that sense of tragedy now because I'm living in the past, I'm living in the present, I'm living in the future, and when I see people taking actions now that are setting them up for tragedy, I feel a tingle of that tragedy happening now. And the tragedy is that that person is going to very likely turn into a monster when, when there's an emergency situation that they are not ready for. I'm no better than you guys, in, 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 like, in, the, in that sense of like morality. You know, uh, you know, push comes to shove, 
if I'm hungry, if I'm starving, if my boy is hungry, my boy is starving, I'm going to do what I need to do to get myself fed, to get him fed, and I'm either going to be successful or I'm going to die trying. And that is, the, that is human nature. I think a lot of people don't like to think about that. A lot of people think that you know, we're all, we are all our better selves because we live in a land of plenty at the moment. But when that plenty goes away, you know, that better self gets stripped away and you have your animal self, which is there in all of us. I know it's in me and I know that it is in the, the vast majority of the population. There have been you know, examples of people throughout history, you know, Gandhi or Jesus, you know, people that uh, were always their better selves. Uh, you know, no matter what happened. But the vast majority of us, we have that monster within us. That's one of the big reasons I prep is so that I can keep that monster contained. People that aren't prepping are not going to contain that monster. And they, that's an immediate tragedy just in and of itself, yourself turning into a monster. It's an indirect tragedy to your family to have a loved one turn into that monster. Uh, you know, that person's neighbors, you know, the, the violence that they are going to inflict on the people around them because they chose the escapist path, the uh, you know the nitpicking path, the uh, you know the, the victim path, uh, the path of missing the point, and that is why these things bother me. It's not because you know today uh, you know I need people to pat me on the back and say, oh that's a great video, you know good job, I, I agree with you 100%. I don't need validation. Like I mentioned, the past couple of years, uh, you know with COVID happening and the world's you know going crazy and people are committing suicide and having all these mental health issues. Uh, I don't need validation that what I'm doing works and works really, really well. I know that. What I'm doing here is to try to share this with you guys. And it's tragic. It's really tragic when people take that gold. And I don't mean to call what I'm doing here gold, but you know, for the analogy, they take that gold that's being offered them. They were hoping for lead and they complain about it. They nitpick. They use the victim complex and they miss the whole point to distract themselves from all the things that they could do right now, right here, relatively easily to in the future keep that monster contained and, and make their lives, their families' lives, and their communities' lives so much better than it could be otherwise. So it's tragic. That's why it bothers me. That's why these five things really, really bother me. And that's why I wanted to do this video. Unfortunately, the vast majority of people who clicked on this uh, clickbait title that I created that really needed to hear this message probably aren't even listening, any, listening anymore. And that's just life. But we do what we can. We try to sneak the stuff out. We, we create some bubblegum and pop, uh, popcorn sounding titles to try to sneak some messages out there. I know that for every you know, ridiculous person out there, well, maybe for every 10 ridiculous people out there, there's one person that really gets helped by this. So that's what keeps me going. I'm going to keep going. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys continue on the journey, journey with me. Just to step back to the video that we did walking around here at this beautiful homestead, uh, you know, returning that dragonfly larva to the river, you must have known at this point that that was a porcupine in there. We got pretty close to the porcupine. You can get somewhat close to porcupine uh, as long as you are not within kind of tail whipping range. You know, stay, keep back a couple of feet. They don't tend to move super fast, uh, you know, especially if they're facing away from you and they're usually going to try to face away from you because, you know, they don't want to mess with you. Um, and, and plus most of their, their big quills are on their butt. They do not shoot their quills out. They do just kind of flick their tail. And sometimes people mistake that, that the quails are flicking out. But as long as you're, you know, back, you know, you know a good yard from them, um, you know, I guess it would be safer to be even further than a yard from them. But, you know, I, I, I routinely go within like, you know, you know, five or six feet easy. And, uh, you know, it, it's reasonably safe to get close to a porcupine. Nothing is safe in nature, nothing is safe out in the woods, nothing's safe in life. But the only way to, I think, live a, a truly authentic life is to expose yourself to the ups and the downs of the world, live in the past, live in the present, live in the future, and enjoy the gift that we have and, and appreciate the gift enough to try to keep it going on into your future. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.